Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us today in our PPD tips and tricks video. So folks, today we're going to do something a little different. We're not going to do anything in X-Lights, not one, not one thing. But if you have a 3D printer, you better hold on because I've got something fun that I'm going to share with you that I've learned how to do. Stay tuned. So if we're going to talk about 3D printers, why are we looking at my original F uh, Falcon F-16 V3 controller build from 2017? Um, well, this video, if you've watched this video, there's three parts to the video. At the very end, you'll notice that I did not once put any labels on my outputs. I memorized where they go, but I had a problem with that this year. And that problem was without labels on them. Now I did put little sticker labels on on the on the side of the case so that you could look at it, but it wasn't user friendly. And my neighbor had a heck of a time figuring out what each output was like. So, in order to save me some frustration going into 2021, as I took down the show this year, what I want to do is I want to solve the problem with uh, with something that I can easily attach to the output controller uh, connectors and uh, these are little tags nice little simple little tag well I used my 3d printer and I printed them and uh, but I made them myself and I want to share with you some ideas where maybe you want to label things that are in your display this is a way that you can do that um, and I'm gonna preface this with the fact that I am not an intelligent 3D printer. I don't 3D print everything for my show. And that's what I'm going to show you today in Tinkercad. So um, one of the things that I was inspired by in the the um, uh, 3D printers group for Christmas light users uh, was somebody came up with a great idea on how to, to, to uh, that they had this little clip thing that they could uh, put a number on it and put a tag in and label the output. And I thought, that's what I need. So I ended up coming up with, as you can see, a couple little designs here to help me label things. Well, while I was in there, I kind of learned how to do kind of my own little tags. And you can you can watch YouTube videos on this, uh, on how to use Tinkercad. But I thought I would share with you how I solved my challenge labeling all of my outputs and not having to use a marker to do it, but actually using my 3D printer. And what I'm going to show you is how you can build this as I actually build the last 12 or 16 outputs for my uh, Falcon uh, F-16V3 build that you saw here on the other page. Uh, I have one through 16 on one side and uh, 33 through 48 on the other side. And so that's my goal today is to show you as I do it um, I kind of started doing it, but I will teach you how to create this for yourself. And I already started the first one, but I'm going to, I'm literally going to walk you step by step, um, through this. So, uh, as you can see, I, 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 this is a, this is a blank Tinkercad. There's, I'll try to point out the things that I know about Tinkercad here, uh, as I do them, but there's some basic premises with Tinkercad that, um, that that uh, I can I can share with you, and that is uh, I grabbed this little box here, and I I used a cylinder, and the whole the, the this clear cylinder and this solid box together made this, and as you can see, one little box just clicking on the box puts a box out there. So all I'm doing is I click it once and put it down, and it creates one. Now I'm going to delete that extra one. Now in Tinkercad, if you hold your uh, left mouse button down, you can pan, you can change your view, okay? So that's that's the thing I didn't understand. Now, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, it, you can scroll in and out, you can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And uh, if you click on the right button, that's your click and drag to select something. So I just grabbed and selected that by accident. So Control Z on, on your uh, Microsoft Windows computer will return whatever you did. Um, so let's get back to this box. So you see you have four corners here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the corner, and I'm going to go over here to the highlighted number. And this is already uh, 
20 millimeter by 20 millimeters. So that's a that's a pretty good size square. That's what I made them. So I didn't change the sides of the box. What I did do was I clicked in the center on the top here and I changed this to 2.5. So so that is how I got that square to make the square. Now let's go through and um, cut out the little circles at the top. So here is the cylinder and this is a hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the corners and I'm going to change the numbers here to 3.5 and 3.5. That's 3.5 millimeters. And then I'm just going to click, right click on it. And then I'm going to pan up here and you can see, I mean, this is, this was arbitrary for me. I just slid it around. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Control Z, control back, control Z, changed it back to the size that I wanted. 3.5. Okay. So... I um, I just kind of eyeballed this. This one's actually a little too close to the edge, and uh, but that's okay. I'm I'm putting it right here now. If you hold the control key, I, I have this cylinder here. I'm it's selected Control and D to duplicate on your Windows keyboard, and all I'm using is the arrow keys, and I'm moving over, 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 over. And now, if I click off of it and I pan around, you'll see that's exactly how I created two cylinders. Now we'll click and drag and we will use this group function here and that's going to create our little holes and our zip tie is going to go through there. Just just as you see here, little zip tie goes right through those two little holes there. There you go. And that's the hardest part. So now you've got this. Once you've got this, that's this background here. So now what do we do? What do we do to uh, create the numbers? So what I, I had to play with this, and the first ones came out and they worked, uh, but they weren't as nice. But I learned a little bit more about Tinkercad, so I'm kind of excited to share this. I'm just going to click, scroll down here in the menu and find the text. Click on it once, it'll highlight it, and then click on it here and it will set it down. So what we can do is we can change this to a number. We can say, let's say this is uh, 34. And I'm going to change this to sans, which is what I'm using over here. And now we have to make this, let's, let's change the color so it's a little easier to, to tell the difference between it. And now if you, you see we put the two together. Um, and all we have to do is just go grab the corner and visually see the size that it will work best to, to fit into it. So let's go ahead and move it around. Let's scroll here. Okay, it looks like it's covered pretty good. And from this point here, we're going to turn it on this side. So you can see the next step that to, that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to change the height of the of the text. So we'll click on it. We have this height in the center. Now I made this 2.5 millimeters tall. This little square here. Let's make this 3.5. Bam! Now you've got yourself this. Um, this nice little setup. Now the other side of the coin is, is look how nice and thick this is. Whenever you put this on a 3D printer and your slicer slices this in your STL file, the thin numbers don't come out as well. So what I had to do was I had to learn, oh, look at this bevel thing. So this kind of makes it a little more bold. And you might want to change this to suit your uh, specific desire to, for how it looks. Make the format that you like the best. Um, but basically that's about it. So I'm gonna do, uh, for the rest of the video, and I'll probably do this in fast motion, and all I'm gonna do is just uh, select, click and drag, and I'm gonna hit Control D, and then I'm gonna use the arrow key and go over a couple locations. I'm actually gonna do something else here. I'm gonna grab both of these and move these over. Uh, there's a reason why I want them close together, and that's that's so they print nice and neatly whenever I actually finish it up. But basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click off of it after I've got it lined up there, and I'm going to change this to 35 and make sure that it all fits on there and it looks good. And then I'm going to select Control D, arrow over.
And the last thing I want to show you here, after we've gotten finished with everything, is to have the availability to export this as an STL file. Now, there's one thing I didn't mention up here. You can change the name. They come up with some goofy names in Tinkercad, but you can come up here and change the name up here to save it. And then after you've uh, changed the name, one of the things you can do is you can export as an STL file. Now, uh, if you have multiple things on the screen here, uh, you can uh, leave it selected as include everything in the design and click the STL button. And now you have the opportunity to uh, export this STL and save it and be able to open that inside your slicing software. Uh, slice it so that you can print it on your 3D printer. And there you have it, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a big like. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't, you know what to do there. By the way, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. It's 100% free. I promise you that you don't get charged one penny for subscribing to the PPD channel. And if you hit the bell for notifications, well, I'll even send you another video the next time we release one. So, folks, if you appreciate the things that we do here at the PPD uh, Tips and Tricks channel, you know, by all means, please consider going to pixelprodisplays.com and signing up for our PPD Sequence Club. That's the way that we ask people to help support us in our hobby, and we hope that the information that we bring to you is helpful and useful. If you haven't done yet so, there's also a link in the video description to the PPD Facebook group called Pixel Pro University. If you have any questions, by all means, Join the PPD community and ask the questions in the group. There is no pix intimidation. There is no dumb question. We answer everything that we can answer. Uh, and by all means, if you are interested in Christmas lighting hobby as far as joining and learning more about 3D printing for the Christmas hobby, I'll throw that group link down in the description below. So, folks, that's going to wrap it up here at Pixel Pro Displays for today's tips and tricks video. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.